Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how you can create procedural candy in Blender with geometry nodes. Okay, so let's start. We start with our default cube. I've already added a geometry nodes network. And I prepared some curves that we can use to create our candy. We start by adding a new input to our geometry nodes network. We will use this input to load our curve. Set this to object and add an object info node. Now let's add our first curve. Now it is time to make the mesh that we will use to create our curve profile. I'm starting with a mesh circle. We use this circle to create the wing structure of our candy. So first I will start with four wings, so I set it to four vertices. I'm creating an input parameter for this and call this loops, because those are the loops of our candy. Now I'm adding another primitive object. I am using a curved circle. And I'm going to instantiate this curved circle on our mesh circle points. This will give us our profile shape. I'm going to lower the resolution here to 4 because we will subdivide this one later and so we have a light working geometry. We'll connect the radius to an input parameter, call this one loop radius. And I'm connecting this radius to the curve circle too. But for the curve circle I am adding a small amount to the radius so it's so it has a slight overlap. Because when it's subdivided later it will it will be a bit smaller. And we need to realize the instances to use them as a profile for our base curve. To color every second loop of our candy red or white, we need to store an attribute. And we will use the index attribute of our mesh circle to define if it's red or white. First let's add a viewer node. Now let's add a capture attribute node. And we will use our index. First let's connect the attribute to our viewer to see it in the spreadsheet. Our spreadsheet needs to be set to viewer node. And now we can see our attribute in the viewer. Right now it goes from 0 to 3. But I want it to go from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And for this we can use a modulo. So we pick our index, connect it to a math node, set to modulo, connect this to the value and set our modulo to 2. And now we have our index attribute which goes from 0 to 1 and then 0 to 1 again. Since we stored our attribute on the mesh circle, it gets transferred to the instanced circles. and it gets transferred to all the vertices of our realized geometry. Now it is time to add a curve to mesh node to add the profile to our base curve. Ok, this is already working, but our curve radius is a little, it's a little big. So let's reduce our loop radius. Our profile works. Now we add a subdivision surface node to smooth out our mesh and to also get rid of the C fighting that we saw before. Connect this here. Set it to 2 to get a nice smooth shape. Now 
Now we also need to fill the caps of our mesh to get a closed geometry. And then we set it to shade smooth to get a nice smooth looking mesh. I will also add an input parameter to control the uh, subdivision level. And I'm slightly tweaking the profile shape. Now we have our profile applied to our base shop. It's time to look at the uh, index attribute or to look at the um, mask attribute that we stored before. So let's have a look at the viewer. So here we can see it goes zero and then we have a lot of meshes with one and then it's zero and then it's one again. So it seems to work. Now we add this here to a new output. We call our output mask. Now we will create a simple material that allows us to display our mask. In our geometry nodes modifier we first need to define a name for our output attribute. I will call this mask2. In the material editor we now add an attribute node. And we will connect the factor attribute to our surface and we also name our attribute mask. And it's important that the uh, attribute node is set to geometry because we stored our attribute on the geometry itself. Now we have our mask. Basically our setup now works, but we need to also apply our material inside of the geometry nodes node tree. So let's add a set material node. Connect this to the output. And here we select our material. Now we can see that our black and white mask is working. If we add more segments, we will get more we will get more loops. And those loops are colored black and white, black and white, black and white. Perfect. I will set this to 4 again. And I also prepared a material which looks more like candy. It is a very simple setup that uses the mask texture or the mask attribute to mix between two colors. And it has some noise texture for some surface variation. Nothing special. Okay, now it's time to add the twist to our candy. First I will add a resemble curve node to define the resolution of our candy curve. Setting this to length. And I will connect this to the group input to control it from the outside. And I'm calling this resample length. Now I'm adding a set curve tilt node to control the tilt of our mesh. And we will drive the curve tilt by the spline factor. First let's add a new parameter, we call it twists. Those will be the twists that will go along the whole spline. So if we send it to like 10 twists, we will have 10 rotations along the whole curve. We will use the spline factor as a base for our twist. Our spline factor goes from 0 to 1. So we multiply our spline factor with 2 times pi. get one full rotation. So now we have one twist over the whole curve. And now we can multiply this by our twists input.
if you want to work with multiple splines in the same node tree, you cannot work with the curve factor. I have already prepared a setup here where we have one curve object with two curves. And as you can see, the second curve somehow looks wrong. That's because it uses the same amount of twists over its whole length. To fix this, we can create our own curve factor based on the um, index attribute of each curve. We add the uh, index attribute. We add an attribute statistic node. Connect our index attribute to the attribute input. And we will divide our index attribute by the maximum of the attribute statistic. This will give us a factor attribute along each curve. And if you now connect the output of the divide node instead of the curve factor node, you will see that the twist looks the same on both geometries. And this is the whole setup. Now you know how you can create some procedural twisted candy inside of geometry nodes. You can get the file for free in the video description. You could also download it for free on my Gumroad account or you pay what you want for it. Bye! Thank you.